Let's move on to the next spot on the board. 4.05 p.m. Eastern, Carolina Panthers 1-10, 0-6 on the road at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 4-7, 2-3 at home. Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida, 81 Fahrenheit, mostly cloudy, 8 miles per hour. I wish this total wasn't a 37. I would definitely be on the under. I wasn't sure really what I expected, but I did expect it to be a little higher than 37. You know, I guess it's just a sharp line at this point and it's juice to minus 114 to the under uh this opened up at 38 if i could get a 39 or even a 38 and a half i i would be on the under from a side perspective here in this one we have the bucks at minus five and a half i mean i, I don't know look i know carolina is bad but i don't know how a, after watching the bucks play week in and week out you know, you want, you expect them to cover by margin, even though they were doing that earlier in the year. 68% of the tickets and 97% of the cash on the under. On the side, 71% of the tickets and 61% of the cash on the Panthers. So Panthers are a public road dog. Panthers come in off an ugly 17 10 loss at Tennessee. They're now 0 and 6 on the road. And then David Tepper fires Frank Reich. And I don't know if this is going to have the same feeling here. Uh, when, when someone gets, and I don't know if it will for Washington either. When somebody gets fired, like a Matt Canada, you know, someone, someone that people have been waiting, okay, you got to fire this guy. You got to fire this guy. Then there's always that boost. But the decisions that were made, you know, in the, you know, trading for Bryce Young and everything they gave up Bryce Young, uh, you know, and the injuries that attack this defense, uh, you know, uh, the injuries have been horrific. I mean, if you look at what's gone on with them, uh, you know, you lose Shaq Thompson, what, in that first game of the year? Was that the first game of the season? I mean, I remember we, were, we had a live stream on it. You have no Jeremy Chin, no Gross Matos. C.J. Henderson and J.C. Horn, you know, are out. J.C. Horn still on IR. I mean, these are huge, huge pieces to your puzzle. And losing them, I, I mean, I, is it all on Frank Reich? You know, so now... Uh, special teams coordinator Chris Tabor takes over as the interim head coach. Senior assistant Jim Caldwell is a special advisor to offensive coordinator Thomas Brown, who will be back to play calling because I remember they switched back and forth between the two of them. The Panthers also fired uh, quarterbacks coach Josh McCown and Deuce Staley, and that decision was made by Tabor and Caldwell. They thought with the transition of power, they don't want these other two. I don't know the story behind that, but... Against Tennessee, Bryce Young was 18 and 31 for 194 yards. He also ran three times for 23 yards and lost a fumble. Jonathan Mingo led receivers with four catches for 60 yards. Chuba ran 14 times, for 45 yards, a touchdown, and caught five for 47. You know, they're not that bad in certain aspects. They're they're 20th in on third downs, six of 16 against uh, the Titans, who are good on third down defense. And they, you know, they convert 37.3% of those. They are 19th in the red zone. They just don't get there enough, but they're fine there. The defense bends, but doesn't break pretty well. I mean, they held the Titans to just two of 11 on third down. This Panthers defense with all the injuries they've felt uh, faced, they're fourth in the league in uh, third down, allowing opponents to convert just 35% of opportunities. The pass rush didn't get any pressure on Will Levis. That's been a problem this year. One sack, four quarterback hits. Uh, the Titans were two of two in the red zone. Carolina's red zone defense is horrific. Uh, 31st in the league, allowing opponents to score 72.2% of opportunities. Then they lose starting left guard Chandler Zavala. Uh, so he was seen on crutches, you know, but he, I'm not sure how bad it is, you know, but they, they were, he could, he's just questionable at this point. They also lost a linebacker, DJ Johnson, to a neck injury. The Buccaneers coming off their second loss in a row in six and seven games, 27-20 to Indy. Baker Mayfield hurt his ankle on the opening drive, but he battled through it. 20 of 23 for 199 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. He also ran three times for 14 yards, fumbled twice, losing one of them. He had an IR, uh, MRI on the ankle on Monday. It came back negative. He says it hurts. You know, I, I, you know, I know that this is an opportunity for some of us in the survivor pool. I just I, That concerns me that he's hurting. He's been banged up all year. Mike Evans caught six for 70 and two touchdowns. Rashad White, 15 carries for 100 yards, caught two passes for 10. But the defense did not look good. Now, they played without starting linebacker Levante David, starting quarterback Jamal Dean. Uh, that hurts them badly, obviously. Uh, they've been bad all year on third down. They're 29th in the league on third down, allowing opponents to convert 44.5% of the time. The Colts finished just 2 of 11 on third down. Uh, so that was a surprise because they've been so bad there. But the Colts went 3 of 5 in the red zone. So it's sort of a flip because the Bucks' red zone 
defense being so good this year. Second in the league, allowing touchdowns just 37.8% of the time. And at home, so this is why it could still end up, and this is probably why, at home, this red zone defense is unbelievable. At home, they allow touchdowns on 20% of red zone drives. I mean, that's unheard of. And that's so good. Take it away for us here and touch on the survivor. I know your friend, Tim Crowley, is battling Pete Loshak and myself for the cash in the survivor pool. Just three of us left. Touch on your thoughts here on the survivor for the Buccaneers, because I know they'll be high on people's lists. And are you moving on this one, Troy? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I got bounced hypothetically last week when I took the Patriots on Survivor. So, uh, yeah, I'm done. I mean, I haven't done any contests in the past before. So this is my first year really looking at contests and, you know, how to play them. And it's almost like a poker tournament in a way. And I'm thinking about the Cappers contest now. You know, it's almost like a poker tournament where, you know, some people are tournament players. Some people are cash game players. I'm more of a cash game player than a tournament player. But this is an, I'll talk about this game a little bit because I do have an opinion on it. This line, five and a half. Immediately, I smell weakness for the Buccaneers, and I, I immediately start looking towards the Panthers, but it's not that easy of a situation. Like you said, I, that's one of the stats I, I touched on that I was going to touch on later in the show. Here it is, the home road red zone dichotomy. And I mean, they had the Lions and the, the Eagles at home, and they kept those two teams out of the red zone in and, and a majority of their attempts, which was pretty impressive to me, but it's not that easy. You know, Panthers are 0-5 ATS on the road. And Bryce Young visibly adjusting to the NFL, huge size differential, and you could tell it's it's definitely impacting. I mean, under pressure, he can't see downfield. His stature just ain't there to do it. The bat, the balls are getting batted down. Anytime he's under pressure, it feels like the ball gets batted down at the line of scrimmage. The offense is so damn underwhelming; it's not easy to get to the Panthers' side. Um, and it, the crazy part was, I watched the end of that game. I felt like the the refs were trying to get the Panthers into position to cover. It really felt like that, and they couldn't do it. And the Bucks defense at this point, I can't believe what I'm seeing because the Bucks forever, I'm like, this is a defensive team. They got a lot of the same pieces. Well, not anymore, man. Outside of the defensive line, this this team has been pretty much completely inept. Outside of the red zone, they've been pretty much completely inept. Um, secondary just can't defend at all. So I'm only looking towards the Panthers. Since 2020, road dogs between plus four and plus six in a divisional game. 63% ATS, 50% straight up. If five or five and a half exactly in a divisional game, nine and three ATS, seven and five straight up. This five and a half is showing weakness, in my opinion. My database is probably going to force my hand again. I'll probably be on the Panthers. Huh. What do you think about Survivor using them? Do you think that obviously if you're on the side with the points, would you also be adding a money line ticket on the Panthers? I would consider it. Um, especially if if we don't see this line get to six, I'm gonna consider this as a, as another money line play. I definitely feel more confident in the market for the Cardinals, but I'm I'm god damn, I'm not gonna be betting the Panthers on the money line. So I won't do it. No. No, I'm not betting the Panthers on the money line, but I'm not playing the Buccaneers per the trends in uh, Survivor. No way. Huh. Yeah, I. It's a tough one. I mean, we're we're here week thirteen, you know, so yeah. we're, we're through you know twelve different teams. It's not um, it's not easy anymore. Uh, Birdie says Caldwell in a decision making position plus plus, especially with a young quarterback. Do you agree with that? I am actually now. I'm, I'm reconsidering it. Fuck. That's a tough survivor is really tough this week. Wow. Cause all these teams are wasted, huh? Yeah. That's actually a really tough, tough one. Maybe they, maybe I would consider them, but I, yeah, I, I can't give a, 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 a educated opinion on that. What, what was your question, Jimmy? Uh, about Caldwell. You like Caldwell in this opportunity with Bryce Young? Not really. I still think this offense, like I said, they're underwhelming. I don't think it's going to make a big difference. You're not going to, if you don't add three inches to Bryce Young's height, then I think he's still going to be struggling until he fully adjusts to the NFL. Maybe adjust this week because this this is a good team to do it against. Um, yeah. Well, I'm still thinking about it for Survivor, but just that alone. This I wish it was a little bit higher so I could get underneath it, but I'm not going to try to get underneath the 37. Although I think you know it's just a sharp line on the total. 